Okay, let's talk about something super, super cool, and that is hash tables and separate chaining. All right, let's dive right in. What is separate chaining? So separate chaining is just one of many, many hash collision resolution techniques. And how it works is when there's a hash collision, meaning two keys hash to the same value, we need to have some sort of way of handling that within our hash table so that's still functional. Well, what separate chaining does is it maintains an auxiliary data structure to essentially hold all the collisions. And so we can go back and look up inside that bucket or that data structure of values for the item we're looking for. And usually we use the linked list for this, but it's not limited to only linked lists. We can use arrays, uh, binary trees, self-balancing trees, or even a hybrid approach. Okay, so suppose we have the following hash table, which is just a fancy name for uh, an array of key value pairs of uh, age and names. And we associate an arbitrary hash value that has been computed with some hash function. So those are our hash values. They don't really matter for now. We're just going to see how we can use separate chaining to handle the collisions. Okay, so on the left is our hash table, so our array. And I'm going to be inserting all of these key value pairs into this hash table via separate chaining, and you'll see how easy it is. Okay, so our first person is Will, his age is 21, and he hashed to three. So we're going to put him in that slot three. Leah, age 18, hashed to four. Since she hashed to four, we're going to put her at index four. So the hash is a way to index into the array. Okay, Rick, age 61, hash two. We're gonna put him there. And Ray, age 25, hash 1. Okay, we're starting to get a little bit full in our hash table here, so we might get some collisions pretty soon. Okay, Lara, age 34, hash to 4, but we say, oh, shoot, Leah is already there. What do we do? Well, in separate chaining, we just chain along. So, essentially, each, each position in the array is actually a linked list data structure. So we're going to scan through the linked list and see if uh, Lara exists. And if Lara does not exist, then we're going to add Lara at the very end of the chain. Okay. So Ryan also hashed to one. But then we look and Ryan is not equal to Ray, so we need to add a new entry at position one. Now Lara, age 34, hash to four, so nope. And oh, Lara already existed in our hash table. So we're good. And she still has the same age, so we don't need to update it. So Finn, age 21, hash to three, so he's got a hash collision. Um, with Will, who had also hashed to three. So what we're going to do is we're going to append Finn uh, to the end of the linked list chain. So note that even though that Will and Finn both hashed to the same value, that is index three, uh, and they have the same age, we tell them apart because we store both the key and the value as an entry in our linked list block. So that's how we're able to tell them apart. Okay, now I want to insert Mark, whose age is 10, and who hashed to 4. So scan through the linked list at index 4 for Mark, and he's not found, so we have to append Mark at the very end. All right, now let's have a look at how we can do lookups in this structure. So it's basically the same thing. So what we're going to do is, given a name, we want to find well what the person's age is. So suppose we have Ryan, and Ryan, when we hash him, we get one. So we suspect that Ryan should be in bucket one. 
When I say a bucket, I just mean whatever data structure we're using at index one. And in our case, the linked list. So I have to scan this linked list for Ryan. So we start Ray, no. So here we're comparing the key. So we're comparing the key Ryan to the key array. And there's not a match, so keep going. Compare Ryan to Ryan, there's a match. Okay, we found Ryan and then inside that entry we say, oh, his age is 56. So return 56. Okay, let's do another one. Find the age of Mark, hash Mark. And since our hash functions are deterministic, we know that if there's a mark, then it's going to be found in position four. Okay, so we look in the bucket four, scan through. Oh, last one is a mark, so we return age 10. Um, so it might happen that the value or, or the key you're looking for doesn't exist, and so it doesn't exist, you return null. Okay, so here's a good question. How do we maintain a constant time insertion and lookup time complexity if the hash table gets really full and I have some long linked list chains? Good question. And the answer is that once there's a lot of elements within your hash table, you'll actually want to create a new hash table with a larger capacity and rehash all your items and reinsert them uh, into this new uh, larger uh, table because tables are fixed size. Okay, and another good question, how do I remove key value pairs from my hash table with separate chaining? Well, the answer is basically the same procedure. You hash your key and instead of doing a lookup, well, you would remove the particular entry in the linked list. So that's it. Another question, how do I use can I use another data structure to model the bucket behavior of separate chaining? And yes, of course. And common data structures that are used inside of a linked list include arrays, binary trees, self-balancing self trees. Um, Java uses a hybrid approach in their hash map. So once they get to a certain chain length, they switch to uh, a binary tree or maybe a self-balanced binary tree, I'm not too sure. However, these alternative methods are a bit more memory intensive and complex to implement, which is why they may be less popular, but they might be a lot faster too. I haven't actually implemented them myself. So have a look at those. Okay, so that's it for this video. Next video, we're going to be going over hash tables with open addressing, which I'm really excited about. So guys, if you want an implementation of a hash table with separate chaining, there's going to be one at github.com slash slash data dash structures. And I will also be going over some source code in the next video. So stay tuned for that. Thanks so much for watching. Catch you later.